Hello and welcome to Friday's Grenada Reports, live with the latest across the Northwest. Hello there, here's what's lined up for you tonight. The rush for a half-term getaway as travel restrictions are lifted. For the industry and passengers, a day to celebrate. I'm very excited because it's been ages since I've seen my granddad and my family. Really looking forward for a bit of sun and relaxation. Yeah, get away from the cold. They say their flats are freezing and heating bills soaring. Now confirmation their rent is going up to. Why some 5 to 11 year olds are now getting a COVID vaccine. Children need to go to school safely. They need to nip in after school and see their grandma. Can you tell I loved it? Wow. And could it be a new Saturday night classic? We hear from the judges of ITV's Starstruck. Well, first tonight, and the COVID pandemic brought the travel industry to a standstill. Now, Manchester Airport's hoping this half-term getaway will help it bounce back. Coronavirus testing for fully vaccinated travellers has been scrapped from today, removing the uncertainty and some of the expense for many of the thousands of holidaymakers who are jetting off this weekend. Our reporter Victoria Grimes has been talking to passengers flying in and out from Manchester on this vital boost for the travel industry. For these passengers, dreams of sun, sea, sand and sangria are just a plane ride away. The demand to get away sky high after a bleak pandemic period. 300,000 are expected to pass through Manchester Airport over the next two weeks, many through the shiny new Terminal 2. First time I've been on holiday, first time ever. And how do you feel to be going today? Happy. Going to Barbados, we're really excited. We've been really looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to this. I need to get some sun. Let's <laughs> get a tan, you know. Is this for all the ladies? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to Abu Dhabi. Yeah, get away from the cold. You know, I've got a set of mocks when I get back, but um, apart from that... So are you going to take any books to revise as well? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, if anybody's watching yes, from yes. school. For Rayhan and his brother Ibrahim, their trip's much more than a holiday. They haven't seen their grandparents in Pakistan for five years. I'm very excited because it's been ages since I've seen my granddad and my family. The pandemic struck and I've never seen my grandparents since, since five years. What are you going to do when you see them? I'm going to give them a lot of massive hugs. <laughs> Well, there's a real sense of excitement here as so many people, around 160,000, prepare to jet off on their holidays. And many of them will be just as excited to be coming home again because as of 4 o'clock this morning, they won't need to take COVID tests when they return if they've been vaccinated. Testing's meant a barrier to travel for many, increased costs and uncertainty causing headaches, an end to it's being welcomed with open arms. We flew in two hours after the restrictions lifted. So, um, yeah, we're, we're through and uh, no testing needed. And somebody looks happy about that, Ray. Yes. <laughs> we can get off early, can't we? It's a relief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a relief. It's a relief, yeah. I think we've, I mean, we've had to do it for other countries that we've travelled to. Um, but obviously you have that worry then of can I get back home again? So it would be nice to not have to worry about getting back home. And for some, it was a welcome surprise. I still have to do the two-day test, I think. No, we don't have to do that anymore. Oh, yeah, from today, isn't it? Oh, I just lost 20 pounds. <laughs> but it's fantastic. It's a great feeling. Under new rules, unvaccinated passengers will still need to test but won't have to self-isolate. Airport bosses are hoping the move will boost a resurgence in foreign travel. They're taking on hundreds of new staff to deal with the demand. I think it's the lifting of the restrictions that really gives people confidence to travel. So it's great to see that we've got the airport really busy and people getting away. We still do have some measures in at the airport. We will be asking uh, our customers to wear masks. You'll see there's enhanced clearing and people are social distancing where possible. Holidaymakers will still have to follow the rules set by their destination, but the move sends a clear message here that Britain is open for business. Victoria Grimes, ITV News, Manchester Airport. Certainly a positive move there. Now, more than 100 sites across the northwest are now offering the COVID vaccine to children aged between 5 and 11 who are classed as at risk. Yes, several thousand have been identified as vulnerable, either because of medical conditions or because they live with someone whose immune system is compromised. Claire Hanna has this report. 
I had my COVID vaccine. Did it hurt at all? Only a little bit. And why did you have to have your COVID vaccine? Because I'm diabetic type 1. Eliza is six years old and one of the many children coming to this drop-in centre in Accrington for their first shot of the COVID vaccine. It's being given to children who are at risk because of a medical condition or if they live with someone else who's at risk. We're also thinking children need to go to school safely. They need to nip in after school and see their grandma and give her a kiss. They need to, to call in on other relatives before mosque. It's about um, looking after that child, but also looking after their whole family. The dose is a third of what's given to adults, but doctors do know it's a tough decision for parents. A lot of people have been worried, you know, how much risk is there to my child? How much risk is there with the vaccination? I think the answer is that there's a very tiny risk with the vaccination. There's more risk if the child gets COVID and there's also more risk if they give it to other people who might be even sicker. For this family, though, as soon as they were told their son was eligible, they booked an appointment straight away. We've been on the shielding list for the last two years, so I think he's he's quite vulnerable. So he's not been anywhere. We've not been interacted with anybody other than carers. Um, So this will hopefully make it a bit easier for us to be able to get out a bit more. So some sort of normality, a bonus for that family. But for Bailey, who's 10, coming for his vaccine meant a different kind of bonus. The most exciting thing that I get a lolly as well. You get a lolly? Yeah. The drop-in clinic here will be running until the end of March. Claire Hanna, ITV News. Well, next tonight, and a fortnight ago, we told you about the families complaining of bitter cold after the cladding was removed from their tower block homes. Well, today, to add insult to injury, it's been confirmed that their rent is going up. Yes, the residents of nine blocks in Salford claim they've faced a series of problems over years and shouldn't be made to pay even more. Our reporter, Tim Scott, has been following the story. Leaking walls and windows, failed heating systems and sky-high fuel bills. Residents of these Salford Tower blocks are fed up with living here. The root of many of their problems was the stripping of cladding off the buildings after the Grenfell fire. And now, news of more problems they'll have to face. Nine blocks of flats and around a 1,000 residents whose lives are being made a misery. The cladding on these buildings isn't due to be fully replaced for another two years. And to make things worse, it was announced this week that a rent hike is on the cards. I'm canny with my money, but still and all, to find that increase, it's going to be a real struggle. Real struggle. Edna Croson is already struggling to pay her bills and says the boilers in the flats aren't fit for purpose. As far as I know, these should only cost between two and three pound a day to run. But it doesn't. It will cost you between eight and ten pound a day. Community worker Fata Jinadu shelled out six hundred pounds on heating in less than three months. It's really frustrating. It's really, really frustrating, especially when you're like a single, um, single mom, and um, you're trying to make ends meet. It's just not right. Pendleton together manage the flats on behalf of Salford Council. It does provide extra payments to cover higher fuel bills, but residents say they're not nearly enough. PT also said the pandemic and issues over funding and regulation have slowed the replacement of the cladding. They told us the council are responsible for setting the rent in line with their procedures, so we're not able to comment on the rent. If any of our residents are concerned about the rent increase or have financial concerns, they should contact us immediately. The council told us they're creating a hardship fund for tenants affected by the rent increase, but point to them losing over 50% of government funding over the past 10 years. The local MP agrees central government need to do more. This can't go on. The government needs to fund our social housing sector properly and in a cost of living crisis. They've got a moral duty to make sure that no rent rises are passed on to tenants at this time. Barring a government intervention, though, the rent increase looks set to make life even harder for residents of the Salford flats, many who are already struggling to make ends meet. I think they're treating us as if nothing, just nothing. It's almost as if you're invisible.
Tim Scott, ITV News, Salford. And we'll keep following the progress of that building work. Now, more of the day's news. And a couple have denied unlawfully killing their two-year-old neighbour in a gas explosion in Hesham in Lancashire. George Hines died in May last year after the explosion which destroyed two houses. In court today, Sharon Greenham, who's 51, and 44-year-old Darren Greenham pleaded not guilty to manslaughter, theft of gas and damaging a gas meter. A trial that date's been set for October. A homeless woman who was sexually assaulted as she slept in a tent in Manchester has been awarded damages because the police failed to investigate what happened. The victim was attacked last August and reported it to the police, but she wasn't asked for a statement and the case was closed. Greater Manchester Police have now agreed to pay the victim almost £3,000 in compensation. They um, gave a very informal interview in the back of the police car. No formal interview was taken. Uh, they didn't take down any means of getting back in touch with her again to give uh, her an update to the investigation. I think the fact that my client was homeless um, was one of the reasons why the, the police didn't take it seriously and didn't investigate it properly. St Helens Rugby Club is investigating allegations that a seven-year-old boy from Merseyside was racially abused while he watched a game. The boy, who's from Mughal near Liverpool, was targeted by some home supporters because he's a fan of the visiting French side Catalan Dragons. The club said it's looking into the matter and has invited the youngster and his mum to return to St Helens and meet the players. Still to come tonight. Will they transform your Saturday nights? We check out the new ITV show, Starstruck. And it was a frosty start this morning. Sub-zero away from towns and cities, but a very different kind of pattern on the windows as we head into the weekend. Your full forecast a little later on. Now, this is hard to believe, but it's six years since the music industry was rocked by the deaths of the young indie band Viola Beach. The group from Warrington were about to break into the big time with two singles and ready to release their debut album. They were killed along with their manager when their car plunged off a bridge in Sweden after the band had played their first international gig. A commemorative vinyl of their album has been re-released to support other musicians. Earlier Ben Dunn, the father of River Reeves, told us what the last six years have been like. It's been difficult, you know, the six years have been difficult and we've been as a family to you know to a very dark place losing a child is horrendous um, but the foundation the charity work the reason um, for being staying positive ha has helped um, and you know the, we're really excited about some some of the plans that lie ahead when you talk to people about Violet Beach and what they achieved what do you say to them well I think the we wouldn't I would not be sitting here now if it wasn't for the music. So for me, it isn't about the, 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 the tragedy, and it was a tragedy, but that won't define those boys and Craig. Um, what will define them is the music. It's just, you know, they, their, their legacy is that fabulous album, which, you know, thanks to Communion Records was captured. Um, so it's, it's about the music, and it's, you know, those boys, those beautiful songs that Chris Leonard wrote, um, are their legacy, and I think we should celebrate that. The music industry was rocked by their death. They were on the cusp of the big time. What does it mean to you to re-release that record, that album? Well, I think the, the fact that um, six years has passed, their music um, is loved by millions, but there are lots of people that haven't heard the music. So I think for us, as a, certainly for Rivers family, um, for us it's about getting the music out there so that more, more people can hear it and can, in, can enjoy it and share in their... their I was going to say genius, but I will say genius, you know, their fabulous songwriting and musical skills. People still love their music yeah. and you've set up a foundation in your son's name. How are you able to help young musicians? Well, we set the foundation up in 2016. Myself, um, River Step Mum, Shaz, who is a dri the driving force, I have to say that, don't I? She's the driving force behind, behind the charity and River's siblings. And we just wanted to do something, and we didn't know at the start, we didn't know where it would take us, but we wanted to do something and make stuff happen. Um, and the simplest thing really was to work with the local schools and colleges in, in Warrington and award small bursaries to young people that didn't have a lot of money so that they could 
follow their dreams. And it's just kind of spiralled from there. So the recent link up with the Royal Northern College of Music is just, although it's, it's um, bigger than that, it's essentially that, uh, that we're able just to give youngsters um, an amazing opportunity. And is that what the re-release of this first album well, the, is all about, making sure that young people do yes, have that bump up? Yes, absolutely. Having? So we, we, are, we as a family want River's um, portion of the royalties to go towards supporting the Royal Northern College of Music, who have set up something called um, Young Artists. And the Royal Northern College, you know, here in Manchester, have a, have a, have a traditional classical route where youngsters that are classically trained can go and um, have lessons on a Saturday morning. And what RNTM are doing, which I think is a brilliant idea, is they're doing that for now pop. So if you're a keyboard player, a singer, a guitarist, um, you will have the opportunity to go along to the Royal Northern College on a Saturday. And we, we're looking to avoid award um, full fee bursaries to youngsters from across the region um, to go along and have that opportunity. That would be an incredible oh, support fantastic. for young musicians. Absolutely. And what do you think River and the band would make of what you're doing? Well, Riv would, Riv would be, um, oh dad, really? You know, <laughs> that's, so, that's so uncool. Um, but, you know, he's, he's I want his talent and uh, you know, I want the fact that he had once been with us for those 19 years, I want that to mean something. Um, and his family want, want, wants that to mean something. So I, I think he'd be dead proud. Ben, thanks very thank much. Thank you, thank you. He's such a talented young band. Good to see that their legacy is still going ongoing. Absolutely, and they do River Fest every August <laughs> as well, which is fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely keeping the legacy. <laughs> On to sport now, and good to see the Super League champions making a winning start, Chris. Yeah, now it's time for the rest to try and keep up after champions St Helens opened their account for 2022 with a repeat of their grand final victory over Catalan Dragons. Super League's return continues this weekend with Salford, Wigan and Warrington all adjusting to life under new head coaches. David Chisnell has heard from all three. <laughs> For the Warriors, it's former academy player and coach Matt Peat, who's made the step up to the top job after taking over from Adrian Lamb. Yeah, we're looking forward to it, really excited. We're going to always expect to challenge and be in the big games and this year won't be any different. Well, among the recruits to the squad is a new face from Australia and a familiar one from Lee. That league in with the lads, what's that been like? A bit of banter? Does it take a bit of time to understand the English humour? Uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, yeah, we, get, we get into each other a bit, it's um, a lot of banter, so it's been quite good. Um, it's, it's quite a young group, so um, it, it, everyone gets along. There's been a few birthdays lately, and they were 21, 20, 23, and I'm like, I said to my wife, I was like, I'm 30 years of age, you and everyone's birthdays like 22, 21. I said, it's making me feel uh, old. I used to be one of those 21 year olds, and now I'm at the other end. Well, this is a big year for Rugby League. Not only is there a home World Cup coming up this year, but also for the very first time, Super League will be shown on terrestrial TV with 10 matches live, starting tomorrow with Warrington Wolves. I think it's been much needed and should be a, a real shot in the arm for, for Rugby League. Obviously for us, it's about winning a game of Rugby League and you know, it's going to be challenging. Leeds are obviously a good side, um, but boys look good. Well, Daryl Powell comes in from Castleford to lead the Wolves pack, but he's not the only one crossing the Pennines. Ending their 67-year wait to be crowned league champions has been a tough nut to crack for Warrington, but they might just have the right man to help them. Your nickname is? Peanut. Explain that. I uh, don't know. Um, I just remember one night we went out, um, we've had a few drinks with some mates and woke up the next morning and my name was Peanut, so yeah, just stuck with it. Completing the trio of new head coaches is Paul Rowley. After doing the top job at Lee in Toronto in the Championship, he's now making the step up to Super League. We're under no illusions, we're, you know, we'll be nobody's favourites uh, for the season, other than, you know, the, the wrong end of the table that everyone's predicting, so... Um, you know, we take that on board and, and use it as motivation. But while that motivates Rowley, the chance to play at some of the world's top venues is motivation for one of their incoming Aussies. As a player, you want to be playing in those big games. That's, that's what you strive to do and play at those big stadiums. So, yeah, it's definitely exciting. You, you want to play at all the biggest stadiums across the world. Well, September's grand final at Old Trafford is a long way off yet, but the Saints are already marching and now the others must try to keep up. David Chisnell, ITV News.
Now, after five games without a goal and getting dropped to the bench, there has been more speculation about Cristiano Ronaldo's future this week. And it seems Manchester United have already lined up his replacement. This is his son, Cristiano Jr., who has now officially signed for United. Here he is posing with his dad's partner and, of course, that number seven shirt. This weekend's Manchester derby in the Women's Super League is a sellout. They're expecting a record crowd at Manchester City's Academy Stadium. United have the upper hand, sitting inside the top three and five points above their rivals. But City are improving after a tough first half of the season. They may have had a slow start, but if you go back to my interviews prior to when they had a slow start, I always said that once they got their players back, they'd be in a, in a good space to really challenge. And this league is going like to the wire with everything so it's going to be a really exciting game it's a sellout you know sold out three days before the the actual game which i think is fantastic for us um and fantastic for the city as well that a game is is drawing in spectators and great to have the spectators back with us so yeah exciting and, uh, and one we're looking forward to should be a great game. Also this weekend, it's the fifth round of the FA Vars. That's the furthest that Withenshaw Town and Abbey Hay from Manchester have ever gone in the competition. Can they clinch a place in the quarterfinals? Let's hope so. Let's hope so. And no pressure, Cristiano Jr. Oh, I think he'll be all right. He'll cope with his dad like he'll be brilliant. Brilliant. Um, OK, here's what's to come at 6 30 with Lucrezia. The Home Secretary warns of the stark challenges that will face the next Commissioner of the Met Police. After Dame Cresta Dick's sudden exit last night, the search is on for a candidate who can tackle confidence and culture within Britain's largest police force. Spain gives a green light for unvaccinated teenagers to visit, but is it too late for half term? And West Ham manager David Moyes says he will play Kurt Zuma again this weekend. Join me for those stories and more at 6.30. Now, do you ever think that your singing may be good enough for live TV? Well, a brand new talent show hits our screens this Saturday night. Yes, soul singer Beverly Knight, Sheridan Smith and our very own Jason Manford will be on the judging panel. ITV's Starstruck might sound familiar. It will see members of the public transformed into their musical heroes for one night only. Our entertainment correspondent Caroline Whitmore caught up with some of the panel to get all the goss on what they hope will be the new Saturday night hit. Wow! We've seen you as a comedian. We've mm. seen you as a presenter. We've seen you as a singer. And now, this Saturday, on ITV's brand new entertainment show, Starstruck, we're seeing you on the expert panel. Is there no end to your talents, Jason? Well, I've been a very judgmental person my whole life, to be honest. Uh, just this is the first time someone's paying me for it. I'm a big fan of Barlow. That was absolutely fantastic. It's a show that is people... Uh, you know, dress it up like they're stars because they sound like them, you know, like stars in your eyes, but for the 21st century. It's not a show where people's futures are resting on that performance. This is not that. You know, when you finish, like, you're back to Tesco Monday. And no one's like, right, oh, off you go, you're famous now, like, because we've already got a Lady Gaga. It is a stars in their eyes for the 21st century. And I've got a fun fact for you. So 21 years ago when I started at ITV, that's the job I started in. Did you really? Who were you? <laughs> I was a runner. Oh, right, I see. A little bit starstruck, but <laughs> Babs has descended into the building. <laughs> Beverly Knight, you are gracing us with your presence. This Saturday, you're on the yes. expert panel. My specialism is voices, and Adam is much more about the performance, uh, you know, because uh, he's used to doing stadiums now with Queen. Sheridan, of course, is an award-winning, brilliant actress. And Jason is our Jason. He's a comedian who also can sing and act. And Ollie, of course, is a pop star in his own right. We're like the famous five for the 21st century. Over to you, Adam. Who would you perform as? I'm an absolute Prince fan. Swagger about on the stage and step into the shoes of a genius. Would I sound like him? No. <laughs> I've got five children, of course. I don't recommend it. Um... You're back on tour and you're in Buxton, you're in Blackpool, you're in Stockport, you're everywhere. If you can get to their towns and cities, they're so happy you've come. They're so grateful. 
that you've rocked up. The tour really is a bit of a recap on the madness, really. And I think I'm just like everybody else is going, look, I've done all the things that I'm told to do. I isolated, I wore a mask, I've had my vaccine. But if you try and ask me what any of it means or why I did these things, I say, I don't know. I just did it. I just thought, right, I'll sit on my couch, I'll watch Tiger King, let us know when I can go back to work. Although with having two children at home that I had to homeschool as well as doing this, that was tricky. Two children? Don't even don't even come at me with two children. Sometimes I lose two children. That's nothing, Caroline. Were you all right with homeschooling? I was a volunteer and I went out driving elderly to their appointments and people think I did it as a selfless act, but I did it to get out of year six geography. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you this, but I'm going to say it anyway because we're here now. I'm also on The Masked Singer tomorrow. The Hedgehog is back. I was in the first series. They invited a couple of characters back, and I'm one of them, and I sing a duet uh, with the panda. And then we go straight into Starstruck, which is on for the next six weeks, which is genuinely a proper laugh. They spent less time in air and makeup than the real Olive. <laughs> Who would you be, Gamal? It's got to be Barry White. Can't beat a bit of Barry. What about you? I'd be Toya Wilcox. Nice. Well, what's the weekend weather looking like? Here's Kerry. <laughs> now that is brew weather. And only boiling what she needs. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Big up you, sis. Hello, very good evening to you. All changed weather-wise as we head into the weekend. It was a cold and frosty start for many first thing this morning. It got down to minus 3.4 Celsius at Leventhal in Cumbria, but we have seen that cloud increase from the west during the course of the day. As we head into the weekend, it becomes increasingly more unsettled. So spells of heavy and persistent rain, strong to gale force winds and exposure, but it won't feel quite as cold. But low pressure definitely in charge. Feeling in rain tomorrow, and again on Sunday, showery for Monday, and then another spell of rain coming through the first part of Tuesday, and we're already keeping our eye on this low pressure system developing to the northwest by midweek. So overnight tonight, it just becomes increasingly cloudy and wet and windy, with the temperatures, if anything, rising as the night progresses. So we're looking at gusts of 45, 50 miles an hour, especially for the coastline and the Isle of Man by the time we reach dawn tomorrow. So a very blustery start, very different to the start this morning, looking out towards the River Loon. A big thank you to Spencer Ross, very sometimes as we head into the weekend. So tomorrow, not great, cloudy skies, outbreaks of rain becoming heavy and persistent throughout the morning into the first part of the afternoon. Strong and gusty winds, temperatures pretty academic. There might be some clearer spells to the west for a very short time. But as we head into the early part of Sunday, we're expecting further outbreaks of rain. And we could be looking at some fairly high rainfall totals, particularly for Cumbria and parts of Lancashire by the end of the weekend. A milder day on Sunday. Outbreaks of rain are blustery. Still gusty on Monday with showers and sunshine. Chilly start Tuesday, but you guessed it, more rain. Have a lovely weekend. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Two sugars, please. Oh, lovely. Uh, well, Toya will be back uh, slightly <laughs> later tonight at uh, 5 to 11, and you can always find out the latest on our website. Now, it's not often an aardvark appears on Granada Reports, especially on a Friday. Yeah, but we're ending with some very cute pictures of a baby one. Dobby, named after the character in Harry Potter, is the first to be born at Chester Zoo. Dobby <sighs> is being hand-reared, and keepers don't know if it's male or female. The zoo says its species is threatened in the wild, and Dobby's arrival is a cause for celebration. Absolutely. We hope you have a fantastic weekend. Have we got time for any Barry White? <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight. <laughs> Bye -bye.